It seems both odd and contradictory that the same person who lamented riding his bike 16.1 miles at 13.9 mph on his previous bike ride and cycling with poor Popo should be so pleased over cycling 10.5 miles at 14.2 mph on his next ride. But here I am, and there it is. We could credit my joy over the fact that even though I used a high caliber racing bike on my previous ride, as opposed to riding a nice but mundane road bike outfitted for commuting today, that I still up my speed three tenths of a mile per hour. But this would be a false reason for my rapture. While the difference in speed is pleasant, crediting my joy to cycling at a higher level absolutely ignores today's significantly shorter ride, and the up and pace simply is not the reason for my revelry. Rather, the impetus for my enjoyment was a hearkening back to childhood, both my own and that of my son's. I spent my formative elementary school years in a small central Illinois town that is contiguous to another small Illinois town that has bragging rights to holding one of the minor state universities that dot the land of Lincoln. 30 years later, my boys spent their elementary school years in a small town in eastern Iowa. In addition to the intervening three plus decades that separates their IA childhood from my IL one, geography also adds 222 diagonal northwest to southeast miles that separates their youth from mine. 105 of those 222 being a change in latitude northward from my IL youth to their IA ones as their Iowa town is at 42 degrees north latitude versus my Illinois one being at 40.5. Two locale factoids that tell us that my tale from two cities would entail very similar climates. Oddly enough, my pleasure was precipitated by a tiny touch of panic. Having decided early Sunday morning to go for a bike ride, I'd been prudent and consulted the tea leaf oracle of local short-term weather forecasting in order to select an appropriate 90-minute window that would bring into alignment the three factors of the temperature rising above the freezing point of water, the designated hour fitting in with my scheduled activities, all while allowing me to return home well before the forecasted rain began to fall. Checking my X, Y, and Z axes, I determined that 11 o'clock stood out as a shining star of trifecta perfection and went about my morning tasks while looking forward to my 20-mile bike stroll. That was the plan, but despite having put in my weather order around 10 o'clock, I discovered the tea leaves had harumphed and declared that the rain, which my local forecasters had said would not arrive until after 2, would instead begin falling in earnest at 11. Oh, shucks, I declared, ever mindful of speaking like the Dick and Jane primers of my youth. Whatever shall I do? I'm not a fan of surprises, and despite having most of Sunday available to do with as I chose, I did have both a long meeting to attend and volunteer helps reading tutoring duties for which I needed to prepare. So I was stuck between the proverbial to be or not to be that Hamlet made clear when telling Ophelia to go jump in a lake. To channel the clash, I was presented with a should I stay or should I go, all while knowing that if I stayed, there could be trouble. But if I went, it could be double. Feeling witchy, I mumbled, double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, and decided to go. I decided to go immediately, but for a far shorter distance to greatly decrease the odds that the weather gods would spite me and send their torrents down as I tallyhoed. I dressed for the weather, of course, something I've either done or had done for me all my life. Dressing for the weather has become easier as I've aged, what with greater and greater access to techno fabrics. And over the last 42 plus years as a cyclist, I've acquired duds, baby. And whether the clothes make the man or not, the right attire can mean all the difference between us not letting the weather get the better of us or the lack thereof being the death of. So, after checking my watch and figuring how much time I had before the rain fell, I slipped into clothes that would keep me comfortable in the mid-30s of Fahrenheit land and then set out on my suburban street wanderings. Maybe it was the suburban street part that got me reminiscing. It's possible that the weather and my surroundings took me back to the me when I was between 6 to 10 years old, riding around the 3 or so mile radius that encircled the home of my Illinois youth a home that provided zero access to bike trails, bike lanes, bike helmets, and next to no adult supervision for my 1960s wanderings. Wanderings that would begin with the thawing of spring and continue at least to the first few light snow dustings of late autumn. 
the sky, the weather, the ever so light precipitation that even calling it rain makes me feel disingenuous, got me thinking of my brother Greg and the incredible feeling of freedom we shared as we two cycled around, unencumbered by adults, exploring, discovering, and just being. My feelings flooded back beneath the clouds and the light, light mist with its gentle but cold baby kisses, the cool but not cold temperatures reigniting a feeling of vitality as I moved, a feeling I seldom experience anymore and sorely miss. Stepping out on my ride, I was determined to navigate a little seven mile loop through the neighborhood that lies just across a busy five lane road that connects my subdivision to the rest of the world. But the farther I went, the farther I wanted it to go. But despite my desire to triple or quadruple my seven miles, fear of the skies opening into torrents kept me tethered close to home, and I traveled a mere 11 miles. 11 miles of nostalgic pleasure. Nostalgia rooted both in my youth and a semi-youth recaptured for another decade a score of years back when I would cycle with my two sons on the streets and trails of our Iowa home. I rode. I enjoyed. I went home. <laughs> By the way, that 11 o'clock rain didn't really materialize, so I could have ridden farther, but why let a silly thing like ball reality get me down? Go move. Go make memories.